uh, this Stephen Quiller palette. I'm going to talk about why he recommends certain colours go in which positions, uh, how to make a complementary grey, and how to decide which colour to place in which well based on how you can make a complementary grey. It's all about the complementary greys. I'm going to set it up in the way that Stephen Quiller intends, which is to have the three primaries placed in the big pointy triangular bits, and then the secondaries, and then the tertiaries placed in amongst those. This palette I ordered online. I have to admit to you that it is the most expensive palette I've ever bought. It, um, believe it or not, cost me $150. Oh, I can't say that fast enough. It, book um, by Stephen Quiller is where I got the idea about his palette and his colour theory. I think he's extraordinary and I can't recommend this I'm going to be setting up with watercolour and he names it as transparent watercolour. The purpose of a Stephen Quiller palette is about complementaries. That you set up the yellow there and the red there and the blue there and then in between will be the secondaries and the tertiaries. And I will be able to set up as well which colour is perfectly opposite that yellow, which colour is perfectly opposite that blue, which colour is perfectly opposite that red. And then I'm going to put in the tertiaries and the secondaries and the tertiaries and then I'll also be able to work out which colour perfectly complements the um, colours that I'm oh, using. recommendation and as close as I can because I'm using Holbein uh, and a little bit of Daniel Smith because I didn't have a Holbein quinacridone rose. Quinacridone rose is incredibly similar to permanent rose, by the way, if you're um, thinking about doing this. Um, so to start with, he does recommend cadmium yellow light as being the um, perfect yellow. He recommends thalo blue as being the perfect purest blue. And he recommends quinacridone rose as a pure red. Yes, we all know it's a pinky color, but when you're painting in watercolor, um, I use that to behave like a red. I actually prefer the mixes that something like quinacridone rose will give you. Now, before I squeeze any colors into the palette, I need to clean it off because it's been in production and um, traveled here from the other side of the world. And so the first thing I'm going to do is lightly spray. Okay, I'm just gonna pick it up and check. It is seriously heavy. This color I'm gonna put in is the primary yellow, cadmium yellow light. I'm going to squeeze out a nice generous amount. And each time I put the color in, I'm also going to mark it on the palette. The next primary I'm putting in is quinacridone rose. As I mentioned, it's incredibly similar to permanent rose. And then I'm gonna mark it on the side as well. And for the blue, I'm going to use peacock blue as a pure blue. Then I'm going to mark it on the side. And I'm happy to write them on oopsie that way this is seriously heavy so viridian i'm going to do next as my pure green this is also stephen quiller's suggestion is that you okay can... i'm into the secondaries now over here is orange i only have one tube of orange i mix my oranges all the time i don't um, tend to buy them so I'm going to squeeze it out because I have it complementary colors opposite each other I'm going to put brilliant orange in as a secondary and I'm going to write it on so now I'm up to the secondary violet Stephen Quiller names the secondary violet as ultramarine violet. Now, I don't have ultramarine violet. I've got cobalt violet, mineral violet, and quinacridone violet. 
I am going to rule out cobalt violet light because it's um, it's it's not a particularly um, strong color. It doesn't have great uh, luminosity. Uh, it's good in certain circumstances, so, but I'm not going to place that one on my palette. It's not a staple in my uh, kit. Um, quinacridone violet might be terrific and um, mineral violet. I love mineral violet. I use it all the time. It's a little bit on the brown side, so there's just no way it's a it's, it's unlikely to be a, a pure colour, but it's one that I use all the time, so I'm going to try and find a, a space for it. Now, in order to decide what goes here, I'm going to mix some colours and see. I'm after a beautiful grey, so whatever mixes with that yellow and comes up with a beautiful grey is going to get its home here. So I'm squeezing out a little bit of quinacridone violet. It's not a pretty um, purpley colour, really. I don't know why you'd call that quinacridone violet. Anyway, I, it's awesome to use. That's quinacridone violet. I'm going to put it over there to remind me. And over here, I'm going to put mineral violet. I love that colour. It's way in the purple zone. I'm going to put that there to remind me. And um, do a little bit of colour mixing on the palette. So here's quinacridone violet. That's how it looks. You can see it's not particularly purple, but oh my gosh, it's so beautiful to paint with. So there's some pure quinacridone violet. I'm, I can see already, I'm so going to put it close to magenta. And put a little bit there, and then I'm going to get a clean brush to go into the yellow. Pick up a little bit, and mix them together. Do I get a beautiful grey colour? Oh, it's making the most beautiful orange. Uh, right, so I need way more violet. I'm going to swap swapping brushes. It's such a beautiful color. It's it's so beautiful. I'm I'm just loving the combination. That, um, but I don't think it will matter how much violet I add to that. I'm going back and forth between the yellow and the. I'm never going to come up with a grey. It's a really beautiful colour, but it's not a complementary grey. I'm going to wash off these brushes and do the same with this one, Mineral Violet. And already I'm loving this palette for the space of uh, swatching these colours out and seeing how beautiful the colour is. And mixing a bit of that into there. Okay. We're in the brown zone. I'll mix all that yellow in. Go back to the, oh, that's the purple. Maybe I'll put this into here. This into here. I'm mixing it all up. Yeah, it's not beautiful. Mineral violet is not the complement to, um, I'm just gonna start again. Mineral Violet is not the complement to Cad Yellow Light. Let me come in with a tiny bit. It's so in the brown zone. I don't think it would matter how much. I'm just going to go in slowly. Same Cobalt Violet Light. Yeah, again, it's in the brown zone. It's not a complementary grey. None of these purples are the perfect complement to um, Cadmium Yellow Light. Um, so that means that I need to buy ultramarine violet. Oh, I've got one more here. I've got Mars violet. I wonder what that one is like. Oh, that's beautiful. Quite violety. I wonder whether or not that's going to... came out looking purple and suddenly it's gone to brown. What's happening there? Ooh, I think there's a bit of separation inside the tube. Look, yeah, there's some purple in there. Oh, it's so brown. Look at that, yeah. Mars Violet is brown. If I mix that with yellow, I'm just gonna get a yellow brown. Yep, right, so that one doesn't work either. So that's three violets that I've tried now. Four violets that I've tried. None of them have worked. I think at this stage is this is gonna wait. 
I have to go shopping. Oh, how marvelous. A reason to go shopping. I'm going to put cobalt in next. I use cobalt all the time. I absolutely love it. It's um, not a transparent blue. It's a semi-transparent blue, but it's such a beautiful blue. I use it in the sky all the time. I use it in water. I, <laughs> I just use it all the time. Right, I'm going to squeeze everything that's left here. Here's my quick tip for the day. If you want to get to the end of your tube of co of watercolour, um, these little, I'll just show you, these little pliers um, are marvellous for getting the rest of the tube out. I do find the pliers sometimes pierce the packaging, but I have not found any. Okay, I've got magenta. So we're into the tertiary colours now. This is quinacridone magenta. And I'm just going to double check that Quilla names that as in this position. Uh, intermediate red violet, yeah, magenta or manganese violet. Ooh, lovely. There's a blue violet called ultramarine blue. blue. So this position here is for ultramarine blue. I This is ultramarine deep, which I use all the time. This is the tiny one, the five mil. So ultramarine down here, and then I'm going to put it as carefully as I can, U, B. Okay, so magenta, you can see this one is opposite that one there. So I'm going to have the absolute pleasure of working out what colour is beautifully opposite that. Okay, um, in order to fill the other spots, because I don't have the exact colours that he, that Stephen Quiller lists on his, I'm going to have to go through this process of working out which colour makes a complementary grey. Um, and that's going to take a long while. So just before I do, I'm going to demonstrate whether or not I've got it right, that Viridian, oh, it's so sticky, this Viridian, it's very interesting. And Queen Rose, look at it, so magnificent. And when you mix these two together, you get grey. Yeah, there it is. That is the beautiful grey. That's a little on the pink side, so I'll pick up a tiny bit of extra green. There it is, going to green, going to grey. That is what I'm talking about, that you get this beautiful um, grey when you mix two complements um, that perfectly complement each other. They cancel each other out and you can get this beautiful grey. Okay, I'm going to test the theory further and get rid of that one that was Quin Rose and Viridian and see whether I can come up with another complementary grey by mixing my peacock blue and my orange here's peacock blue look at it Love it. It's so similar to um, phthalo, but it's not phthalo. Phthalo is also incredibly beautiful. The thing I prefer about peacock rather than phthalo is it's a little easier to paint with. Here's my orange. You can see how intense that is in comparison to that. So I'm going to add a little bit of orange to the blue. Ooh, beautiful. Look at that. I'm coming up with a beautiful grey. It's a blue grey. I'm going to add the tinsiest bit more peacock blue. Oh, it's a really beautiful grey. It's a it's a blue grey. And 
ones. So um, I've made the right choice there. This peacock blue is beautifully opposite that um, particular orange, which was called Brilliant Orange. I've got lots of other blues to go in here. I've got Cobalt Turquoise Light. I'm going to have to work out exactly where, whether it'll go there or there, but it's um, a colour I use all the time. I've got Cerulean Blue, and I'm going to work out whether it goes closer to blue or closer to green. I'm guessing this way. Uh, we've also got Rose Matter. I'm thinking that will probably go there between magenta and quinacridone rose. I've got quinacridone scarlet. Now that's a lovely red, poppy red. I love, absolutely love that one. And it's probably going to go there. I don't tend to use cad red, which is um, probably going to sit in this section here, but I do own it. I just never paint with it anymore. I don't um, love the mixes that cadmium red comes up with, so I tend not to paint with it. Also, the cadmiums tend to be a little bit opaque, so I tend not to paint with them, whereas um, quinacridone scarlet is beautifully transparent, and it's it's a beautiful red, absolutely wonderful for poppies and things like that. If you're at all interested in how it all turned out and what other colours I placed around the palette, I would love if you put a comment below because I'll continue to record and, and um, work out where all the colours go. But I won't know uh, for a few hours. I'm going to have to um, work on it and work out what mixes greys. And that's how I'm going to decide whether or not something gets placed there. Uh, possibly a little bit of guesswork as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Please give this video a like if you got anything out of it. Bye.